a very, very warm welcome to Yoko Ono. So you're, you're so excited you're here and actually to begin with the beginning you wanted to have an image uh, projected and uh, we're going to have that in a minute and the image is uh, about war is over and before we talk about the more recent uh, campaigns I wanted to ask you to tell us a little bit about war is over because that is something which has played such a big big role ever since the 60s when you and John came up with this idea. Can you tell us how it all started? Well, um, one of the reasons that I wanted this uh, voiceover poster here was because voiceover is remoted. And I think I still believe in that. And uh, I think that there's more uh, things that we can do to get together. And it's very important to do that. I have been doing that all, all my life, in a way. Um, Instead of showing a sculpture that is in a museum or something and you just look at it and say, this is beautiful, which is a good thing to do too. It's like part of the peace industry. <laughs> but uh, I think it would be much better when we participate in the work together. And that's why I wanted to do these things. And this is one of the things I do, which is called Ono Code. And it says, I love you. I love you. And uh, I think some of you already got this. Wherever I go, they do this for me. They do this to me. Love you. And many ways that we can uh, connect, and simple ways, because we're getting more and more shy people, scared people, and we don't know how to uh, com communicate with each other. And. Uh, but still, a lot of things that's happening now is actually very beautiful. And we're thinking, well, it's not very beautiful, but it is. For instance, the fact that uh, uh, people, more people are born with cesarean operation. It's OK to talk about that. So when you're uh, born in the usual natural way, you go through this very, very narrow passage, and your brain is squeezed, squeezed by your mother's thighs. And so it's a very, very stimulating thing. And then you go through that, so at the time, your mother is hugging you, but at the same time, you're saying goodbye to your mother. It's a very intense moment. But when you're born with cesarean operation, you don't go through that. And, and even with um, people who's not born of cesarean operation, but naturally, uh, we have very strong painkillers so that uh, this part of hugging, a real strong hugging, is not there. So all the babies who are born now are thinking, we miss that. Our brains miss that. We, we were not squeezed. The brain was not squeezed. So uh, our body is always wanting that squeeze, the big squeeze that we didn't get. So what do you do about that? And I think that what you can do, uh, well, it's getting there. Uh, in other words, we're thinking, oh, it's terrible. We should not do that. We should have natural birth, and we should let the mother suffer, and all that. But actually, we're going into a very good direction. Everything that happens is a blessing, in a way. And this blessing is very interesting, that our planet is overpopulated more and more overpopulated. We're not going to have enough food for everybody. Very soon, we're not going to be having food for everybody. And at the same time, we have this incredible, intense desire to get that, get that excitement that we were supposed to get in the beginning. We didn't. So what are we going to do? We're probably, all of us, are prepared to go into the universe and maybe um, find some place 
That's very interesting. <laughs> no, it's fascinating because we had before the conversation with Dimita and you, and both Dimita and you talked about the journey to the universe and this notion of the first encounter. And I think there are so many different aspects we could talk about, about you know, your journey uh, and how your work opens to, uh, to the universe. But before we do that, I just wanted to ask you if you can tell us maybe a little bit about the beginning of the War is Over campaign, because it accompanies us here throughout the talk. Yeah, and yeah. Um, it's something which started actually as a very special Christmas message from uh, you and John, War is Over, if you want it. Can you tell us how it began? What was the epiphany? Well, the, the message is there, clear, isn't it? And I still want to um, talk about this particular thing that I only said half a sentence, <laughs> which is the fact that we are always thinking uh, it's getting to be uh, a very inhuman world, and we're getting to be inhuman. And uh, you know, we might have all test tube babies, but test tube babies don't have a, a strong concept of mother or father. And, uh, and we think, oh, no, this is horrible. But I think that it's getting to, we, we're sort of space transformers. We're all space transformers, and we know about that. But I think we are going to transform ourselves. And so uh, <laughs> we're saying, oh, uh, you know, we're going to all disappear, and it's only going to be cockroaches who are going to be here. Well, probably so. But I think that the cockroaches are us. We are the cockroaches. So don't worry about it. <laughs> and the cockroaches, when you, you think in the size of the universe, the vast, vast universe, we are about the size of cockroaches. And we are going to make it. But that's actually a marvelous installation you did, which happened in New York, and it happened in Moscow, it happened in different cities, in Berlin, the, in London, the, the, the cockroaches. It was the Odyssey, <laughs> another journey. It was the Odyssey of the cockroaches. Oh, yeah, Can yeah. you tell us about this? I did, yes. I did a show called Odyssey of a Cockroach. And, uh, you know, I was sort of aware of the fact that that Odyssey was actually our Odyssey. And, uh, we can start to think about the fact that all the transformation that we are seeing now, and maybe we're going to have many robots who are going to uh, help us energetically, um, are all right. You have to see the blessing of it. You have to see that transformation, there's nothing wrong with it. And that also leads us actually to your last visit to Munich, because when we, we were together in Munich when we did Utopia Station with uh, Chris Derkon, yes, and that was yes. the first time actually you presented the yeah. monocall. Yeah, uh, this is uh, uh, that the place. Uh, Munich was the place that I introduced my honor code. And honor code um, is to sort of communicate with people uh, again, but without being embarrassed. So, you know, it's very difficult to say, I love you. But if you have something like this and say, I love you, I love you, it's easier. <laughs> and I do, I, I do love you. Thank you. And the Utopia station at that time was also a moment, actually, I looked again about at, this, at this conference, I was listening to it, and you were saying that for you it was important about this idea of allowing people to be different, and you also actually did your own Utopia. It's a, a place called Nutopia. Nutopia. Can Nutopia. you tell us about Nutopia? Well, Utopia is a very old concept. Um, so we just put it like new Nootopia, Nootopia. And uh, this Nootopia was a, a, a very different one in a sense that all of us are part of Nootopia. You're a Nootopian. As, as soon as you decide that you're a Nootopian, you're a Nootopian. And uh, my husband had uh, uh, a little label, a plaque that said Nootopian Embassy, which he put it on a kitchen door. <laughs> And you know, and he said, "Well, we're, we're an utopian embassy too, but uh, you know, everybody is. So we are part of an utopian country." 
And as part of this DLD uh, conference where data is the, is the topic this year, and I was thinking it would be really interesting to talk about your pioneering work um, with the internet and with digital oh, yeah, 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 art forms. Yeah. And I remember the first time I saw you work on the internet was very early. It was somewhere in the mid-90s. Um, and it was an incredible experience because you actually wrote a hundred instruction. It was an instruction every day and one could follow it on the internet. Can you tell us about this beginning of you in the mid 90s? Yes, and, you yeah. know, uh, when Marshall McLuhan said that uh, uh, media is a message and I was very uh, concerned about that. And I did tell him that. I said, look, you're saying that uh, media is a message. I don't want the world to be like that. I think that message is the media. And don't forget the message. But of course, you know, the, the, I think the media is much more interesting for people. So sort of graphic and exciting and maybe a little bit pornographic or something. But uh, message is not that interesting. But it is actually the thing, the basis of our life. And this idea with the instruction is something which obviously didn't start in 96. It's just that in 96 you put it on the internet and uh, you've influenced so many generations of artists with your, with your instruction pieces. Yeah, I did a digital, I did a digital uh, what is it, event. A hundred days digital event. And uh, each day there was a little instructions. And uh, people li liked it because, you know, when they get up in the morning, they think, what is the instruction today or something? And the reason is because if it's a uh, media is a message and media, all you have to do is just you know sort of be a couch potato and, and look at it and sort of be entertained by it. But when it's a message, you have to do it yourself. And I really believe that all of us within us have an incredible superpower, and that has to be awakened for us to survive and we will survive. Thank you. And this message is something which um, actually you started with the Grateful Book very early and you said when you did this uh, project, you told me in the 90s that all this stuff you were discussing in the 60s in terms of global village is actually uh, happening now. So I was wondering if you can tell us a little bit about the beginning of this idea of your planetary exhibitions by instructions, because I think it's something which goes back very, very far. It, it's something which goes back actually to your, your childhood in Japan, this interest in instructions. Yeah, well, you know, the grapefruit is a book of instructions, and if you can get hold of it, I would appreciate that you would enjoy it. And can you tell us about the grapefruit uh, idea, how this idea, because I remember that you, you, you once told me you all of a sudden wanted to write instructions for the sound of birds. It's something which goes far back to your, to your childhood. How did this instruction idea enter? Well, I don't know, but uh, when I was uh, very, very young, I started to get these ideas, and it was oh, like a haiku. Haiku is a short, sort of a, a short um, form of poetry. And, uh, but it came in uh, a kind of uh, instructions in a way that people can do it instead of me telling what to do in a way. So that's how it happened. And it's something which continues. I mean, you did a wonderful exhibition in Venice a couple of years ago where you had this idea of many, many rooms. There were actually six rooms, but one could oh, yeah. imagine many more rooms. I think but that, but that I think we should wait until my show in Serpentine this, this summer <laughs> that I hope you will come. <laughs> and uh, the idea was that in Venice, um, I was only given six rooms. And I, I can just put things in the six rooms, and I said, oh, six rooms is not enough. So I added 100 rooms <laughs> to it as a conceptual rooms. And um, it just was very interesting because my show was the only one that had, had 106 rooms. And I also found a, a quote in an in a, in a older interview we once did, actually in our very first interview, um, where you told me that John 
often said that uh, you had so many ideas that uh, uh, actually ideas came to you like tuning into some radio from the sky. Yeah, uh, yeah. And somehow the instructions have a lot to do with these many, many ideas of different artworks. And you told me that by instructionalizing the artwork, you were somehow delegating the outcome to others, that you cleaned up your head and could sort of free it. Can you tell us about this? Well, you see, the other thing is, uh, well, two reasons. One was that the, um, the ideas that I got were so enormous that I couldn't realize it myself. So I started to write about it. And, um, but also, I loved the idea that um, I, I'm not giving something definite. It's like I can get beautiful, creative ideas from other people that I can see uh, happening within that instructions. Then when this uh, instruction piece was online, you also started to work with the wishes online, because also the wish project goes obviously back much longer in history. You anticipated again somehow the internet years before, but then it actually became a, a very important project. First of all, the tower, Imagine Peace, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then also a, a second life project. Can you tell us about this whole yeah. project? Yeah. <laughs> it's a very big question, I know, because it's such a complex. I know. It's, it's just, well, so then now we have a thing in Iceland called the Imagine Peace Tower, and the reason is because uh, I think that it's very important that all of us make wishes and they are sent to Imagine Peace Tower. And so, in a way, all of us are wishing together. It's very strong, I think. And uh, one day we'll get what we wish, wish for. <laughs> And you've had the wish trees for a long time in exhibitions, because whenever you do an exhibition, very often there is the wish tree, and you've collected hundreds of thousands of, of wishes. Well, I think it's about over a million now, and it's, it's very... Mm -hmm. these, these over a million wishes have now found a place in, uh, in Iceland, and it's an installation with extraordinary light, so at the same time it exists on Second Life. Can you tell us about the Second Life dimension? The Second Life of it? Well... Uh, I mean, they have a video of Second Life. But I, I really think that, the, uh, that what's happening in Imagine Peace Tower, or in Iceland, which is the Imagine Peace Tower, uh, is something that uh, uh, we can put our wishes into and make it very powerful. I really believe in the power of vibration. And that's the only thing that's going to make us survive, to have an incredible positive power vibration. And uh, so let's hope that we can do it. And this leads also to another project where, which hopefully can help us on this journey, which is your smile project. Because yes, there's yes, not yes, only yes. the wishes, there is the smiles. And um, the smiles is a project which started again in, in the 60s, because you had this idea in the 60s that you wanted to make a film which includes a smiling face snap of every human being in the world. And that's something which is now happening. I think so. It's going to happen with Serpentine Gallery, isn't it? <laughs> Can you tell us about the Smile Project and how, how it started? Because it's a great it's it's a, well, it's a be a, Yeah, There's going to be a little place where you can come and sit and smile, and that's going to be automatically a uh, video. And uh, we'll have so many people coming and just smiling. And we're going to send that out to the universe saying, all of us are smiling. This planet is full of people who are smiling. <laughs> And if one reads the instruction, it's a very beautiful text because it sort of starts with smile just by twisting the ends of your mouth up. Then it goes to smile with your eyes and mouth. And it continues to the next step is to smile from your stomach. And then it's also to smile from your knees. Can you tell us? Yeah, what happened was when uh, my husband passed away, I was uh, looking at myself in the mirror and I was like, like that. And I said, well, this is not going to work, you know, and I'm going to be sick. <laughs> and also, I can't be sick because my son, my son is going to, uh, well, he's, he was depending on me. So I tried to sort of smile in the mirror. And in the beginning, it was very hard. I thought, this is phony, you know. But then I started to smile and smile and smile, forced myself to smile. And finally, I started to see that I'm not just smiling with my mouth, 
Oh, my eyes, eyes is very important. But my whole body is starting to smile with my uh, breast and uh, stomach, and uh, it just went on and on. And I was smiling with my whole body. <laughs> and it was really a great feeling. And I thought, well, I have to tell this to people, and we can all smile together. Thank you. You know, they're, they're more interested in talking and not listening. And I <laughs> <laughs> no, it's almost a great conclusion, but Yoko, there's maybe uh, a, few more, a few more things which I oh, wanted okay, to, okay. to well, ask you. Is that fine? Maybe, maybe we should ask them. That's a great idea. Yeah, can we have a microphone? You can open it to the floor. Are there questions for Yoko or comments? Just one, yeah. uh, one or two. We have one here. How do you wage a war against conflict? Well, you see, because that's because you think that there's conflict. Uh, when you really look into it, we're all the same, we're humans, and we don't really have a conflict. And we're going to find out about that if we can talk, if we can talk to each other, or if we can hug each other, or if we can kiss each other, or we can make love to each other. I mean, it's very important that we have a connection when we don't have a connection, of course there's conflict. Just the fact that we don't have a connection is a conflict. Is there another urgent question? Can we take one more? One more, yes. One more question. If not, oh yeah, there is a question here, very good. <laughs> What's better, all you need is data or all you need is love? <laughs> what is it? What is better? All you need is data or all you need is love? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in the end, all you need is love. I mean, I just know that it, it be, you're going to say, oh, she's 60s. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's true. That's all you need, really. But we don't have a lot of it now. You know, we think that, you know, oil is important and we're not getting any energy, you know. We have to think about our energy. We have to first get our energy going. And that's love. Thank you so much, Yoko. Thank you all very much. Thanks.